What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound Tech once again, and today we're going to show you guys how to build a PC, your very own gaming PC, with nothing but a Swiss Army knife and hopes and dreams. Okay, so to start things off today, we're going with a super budget build. This should be able to play League of Legends at 1080p, you heard me right. And the great thing is, you don't need all that much to do that. Today we're going to be taking a look at the DIY PC case here, and we're going to be installing all of these parts. So some of the parts that we have here is uh, going to be an H110 motherboard. We have the nice budget G5400 processor here, and then we have an EVGA 500 watt power supply and a cooler for the CPU because even though you're not overclocking, it's nice to have a cool looking cooler. So to start things off, the thing about the Swiss Army Knife is when you go to pick one up from Target or Amazon, affiliate links in the description below, you might need your Capital One card and when you get home you might need additional tools. Now the bracelet should help you with this and give you the extra strength to, to hopefully tear the, the, to tear the, the package, you might have to use your teeth. Oh, or the likes here. Hmm. Just that, uh, you know, whittle it away until you get the, get it out, you know. Oh, oh, oh God, oh God. Now, you're gonna wanna pick up this one in particular because it comes with a very handy uh, CPU installation tool. So you can just press down on top of it. It's also good for installing DIMMs. So there it even has the, the nice Swiss Army logo. And this one specifically was made for building PCs. As you can see here, it has a uh, Phillips head screwdriver there for you to do all of the work that you need. But without further ado, let's get into building the rig. First things first, you're gonna wanna get the motherboard out of the box. Once it's out of the box, you'll want to put it not only on top of a table, but preferably on top of the motherboard box itself. This will ensure that you don't have any static coming from the plastic table. If at all possible, it's going to be best to assemble the PC or all the parts that go onto the motherboard outside of the case before installing it into the case. This is going to be the best method here. Now as you can see we have DDR4 slot 1 and DDR4 slot 2. Because we're going with a budget build and luckily Intel doesn't depend on dual channel that much, we're actually going to only install one stick of memory. This is 8 gigabytes at 2666, so we're going to install that right there. You can install it actually in either slot because in this particular case we're looking at single channel no matter with whichever way we decide to go. Now the next step that's going to be important is going to be installing the CPU. Some people would say that you have to remove this cover but you actually don't have to and I'll show you why. Pushing the tab out and bringing the lid up, you're going to take the CPU and align the corner of the CPU with the corner on the motherboard there. There should be two notches on the top and you will just lay the CPU in there. Once you've done that, you're going to bring it back down and make sure that the notch lines up with the screw hole and then pop it down. And hey, look, it pops right off. Definitely save this. Do not throw it away because if you ever decide to sell the motherboard or the CPU and you're waiting on another one, it's best to go ahead and reinstall this so that you protect the pins as the pins are on the motherboard for these Intel CPUs. Now that that's complete, we can install the cooler. Now some coolers, if they came off of another system, will already have some pre-applied thermal paste. It's highly recommended in this situation to go ahead and clean the old paste off 
as best as you can. If you want to become a stickler about it, I would recommend putting some alcohol on whatever pad you're drying it off with or cleaning it off with and just rubbing back and forth until it all comes off. The next step would be applying thermal paste. You can apply it however you like. Some people prefer the dot and some people prefer to spread it across manually with a, a spreader. I just recommend, especially in this case, to just put a small pea-sized dot on the center of the CPU. Now you can judge this accordingly however you like, but the main thing to realize is that the die runs in a rectangular pattern underneath this, so there's actually not even any ne necessity to hit the corner edges of the CPU, unless of course you're really, really going to be pushing the overclock. On a system like this, there's no overclocking, so we're not going to worry about it. Next is we want to orientate the fan to blow out the back of the PC. You can always tell what the back of the PC is depending on where the I.O. is. This is known as the I.O. So at this point we're just going to take this and push it down. And then we don't need any screws for this particular one because it is a stock or standard size style cooler. So we just need to place the pins to line up with the holes. And at that point we can kind of pick the board up and fasten them down in. Now they can be a little tricky if you've taken them off a whole bunch before. And the tricky part is to make sure that you clasp the actual nubs on the bottom of the board. Now if you struggled as much as I just did with that, a couple things that you're gonna wanna check is to make sure that these are fastened and not loose like that one is. And then check the bottom of the board and make sure that you have the middle black piece to push the two tabs out across the side. And so three on each side, and then you know it's completely fastened. This works with the stock Intel cooler as well. In this particular case, you can't install the cooler without with the fan on. So now we need to install the CPU fan. And basically it's a bracket that just holds itself on with pressure. So you can just put the clips in on one side and then bring it around the other and snap in. I'm gonna move it down a little bit as low as I can get. So as I can see here, oh, it definitely just barely clears that dim. If we were using Dominator Platinum or something, we would have to put this stick in the outside slot. In fact, because of this, I'm going to go ahead and take it off and place it in the outside slot so we don't have to, so it'll look a little bit better. I'm gonna reseat the fan once again, pushing the clips over to the outside and then pushing them in all the way over there. Now, if we take a look for the CPU fan header, we're gonna wanna look for one on the motherboard named CPU fan. As you can see here, this one is labeled CPU fan, so we're just gonna plug the CPU fan into the CPU fan header. Now, if you guys want, you can always use some tweezers, <clears throat> excuse me, zip ties to go ahead and clean up this cabling. Now, another thing that comes in handy or the pocket knife comes in handy for it are the scissors. Now, unfortunately, this one does not have scissors, so we're just gonna have to use the knife to cut the warranty label off. Of course, don't do this if you want to ever have a warranty. Now, I'll just clean up the appearance a little bit, and we're just gonna tuck this up, and then go ahead and zip tie it. Once again, we can use the knife on the Swiss Army knife to go ahead and cut the extra off, being careful to cut away from yourself. And then you're good to go. Close the knife and set aside for later. So at this point, we are ready for the case. So the first thing on the case that we want to prep for is going to be installing the I.O. shield, also known as the bracket. You're going to install it on the back side, making sure that the holes align with the output on the motherboard. And since there's no screws holding it in, you saw that I had to put a real manly firm 
press onto it. Next, let's start to prep for cable management. So as you can see here, we pretty much have everything lined out. But it's going to be much easier to install the power supply before we move any further. The only cables that I would recommend moving or replacing would be this one here. We're going to drag it all the way up to the top here and bring it back down from the back side. And then that way we can place it properly later. The next step is going to be, like I said, installing the power supply. So let's get an unboxing. This power supply is from EVGA and it's very handy. Once again, we'll be able to use our pocket knife here and we'll just bring out the knife portion of the pocket knife to remove the cellophane on the power supply. Now that we've removed the cellophane, we can cut the tab or the security tab tape off of the back of the case and then hopefully open it up. And they said this was a good tool for the PC building job. I thought the knife would come in more handy than it really has. All right, so let's get this open up here. This is a very, very nice power supply. I, I, love, I love this power supply. Here you go the EVGA power supply. Make sure you don't forget the screws or the power cable. You can set the box aside for later. This power supply is 80 plus, but just basic 80 plus certified. So it'll supply all the power we need for this system and a lot more for upgradability in the future. And you can pick it up from Amazon for about $30. Whenever picking up a power supply, I definitely recommend checking the, the pictures to make sure there's an on and off switch. This is primarily due to the fact that a lot did on the cheaper side come without this switch and plugging in the system and then having it immediately power on can cause some issues, especially on cheaper power supplies. So always look for that. Let's get it installed in the case now. Bringing the case back up here, we are just going to untie all of the cables from the power supply here. With this, I think this is called a twisty tie. Um, it looks very similar, of course, to tweezers. So we, I get them mixed up a little bit here and there. So there we go. We are going to initially take the cables and feed them through, unfortunately, one at a time because the hole here is kind of small. So we'll just go one, and then, and then we're just gonna try to feed as many through it <laughs> at, at once as we can. Most cases have a cutout on the power supply, similar or near the power supply, similar to this. I always recommend pulling your cables through to the back when installing the CPU. Okay, so I'm not sure where that left off. So like I said, there's always a cutout on a, every case near the power supply to route the cabling. Always route it to the rear of the case. And then the next step is going to be deciding where you want to put the fan. If the fan is faced down, it will suck air out from the outside of the case and blow it out the rear. If it's faced up, it will suck air from the inside of the case and blow it out the rear. Now in this particular case, we want positive pressure and seeing that we only have a single fan in this case in the front and a single fan in the rear, we're gonna want to place this power supply facing down. There's also a handy dandy filter on the bottom of this case that will filter out any of the air going to the power supply. At this point, we'll need our handy dandy screwdriver and this time it's gonna be right here, this little Phillips head and we're going to want to screw the power supply into the case. Now you're gonna to wanna to find the four to eight pin adapter on the power supply that's labeled CPU. 
And in a lot of cases, it's really hard to route this in most cases through the top with the motherboard installed. So we want to do that without that, especially on this case, because unfortunately it only really fits one four pin at a time. So you have to put one through and then kind of finagle the other one in as well, which can be quite challenging actually. Once that's done, you're pretty much ready to install the motherboard. Lay the case down. It doesn't really matter if you lay it on top of the cables, it'll be okay. Okay, so now that that's through, we're going to install the motherboard. With light motherboards like this, it's pretty easy to hold by the cooler. However, I don't always recommend it if it's a heavier motherboard. Now you can see we're kind of need to push that that four pin power cable up and that's why I said we wanted to push it in put it in in this case before we put the case on. So now we're going to push this up a little bit more and then we're going to get our motherboard screws. And because we're using a Swiss Army knife we're going to want to just go ahead and put these in with our fingers at first. If you ever make a mistake don't worry if you put the IO shield in backwards you can just pop it right back out and flip it over the correct way. See, everybody makes mistakes. We're going to place the motherboard in, and then we're going to place the screws in the holes. I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> oh. Okay. So in a lot of cases, this pocket knife will work. Um, <laughs> however, in this case, it will not. Our option is we can remove the CPU cooler to give us some more room to get our screwdriver in there. But even then we won't be able to spin it because it's shaped like that. So I bought the wrong Swiss Army knife. So unfortunately, boys, at this point, if you want to use a Swiss Army knife to, you know, build a PC, I'm going to have to recommend you head over to The Verge. For now, for now, we're going to have to use a Phillips head screwdriver. A real one. At this point, we're going to plug everything into the motherboard. All right, so the thing you want to pay attention to with the USB 3.0 is the little notch and you want to line it up with the notch that's on the port. Your SATA cables you want to plug into 0, 1, and 2 respectively. Checking your motherboard manual to make sure you're plugging it into the correct one. We're going to want to plug in our system fans and that bugger of a 4, P8, 4 pin EPS that is going to be really really hard to install. Now that we have the four pin installed, we're going to install the 24 pin. It's up here at the top, so I recommend if you're on this case to route it through the top right here. When you do this, make sure the tabs on the extra four pins are underneath the tab on the 24 pin. And then you will have to bend it down and kind of hold it together, which can be tricky, especially if you have a weird angle like this. And then the clip will go on towards the edge or the ledge of the connector. Ta-da! We're gonna route we're gonna route the rear IO back down and through. We're gonna bring them both down through here on the bottom. Now there are a couple ways we can go, but we're just gonna go straight through here for the audio. Reference your motherboard manual for that. And then reference your motherboard manual for the front panel. Should be labeled with F panel or the such. And in a lot of cases it will label the switches on the actual pins. So in this particular case, you need to keep in mind that we actually only have two fan headers on the motherboard. So since we have three fans, we'll have to either choose to use the Molex adapter that comes on this fan, or we'll need to get a fan splitter. Keeping in mind that if you use the Molex adapter, there will be no fan speed adjustment, which will then make the system louder or noisier. Luckily, I like to keep some in stock. So as you can see, we have one here. 
and you're just going to take the header and plug it into your fan header. Both of these will be system fans, so we're going to plug it into the system fan header. In this particular case, I'm going to actually just run it back down here to the back of the case. Trying to keep everything nice and tidy. Okay, so now that we have placed that in there, we're going to unzip or untwisty tie or un... Um, yeah, I give up on that joke anymore. And we're going to run this to the back of the case. Okay, so in this particular instance, what you'll notice is that the motherboard covers the two ports that we had up here. However, because we're already running all these cables down at the bottom, we can probably tidy it up just fine and tuck it back here. I'm behind the GPU once we get the GPU in and it should look fine. I'll show you guys here right now. We should at this point be ready for the graphics card. Here is the Gigabyte RX 550. Ooh, okay, so as you can see, once you actually install that, it looks pretty good. There is, of course, in this style case, no PSU shroud, so unfortunately everything down here is just going to be exposed. Now, for the rest of the parts we do have, if I recall, this is a two terabyte or one terabyte? No, okay. Wow, okay. We need to swap that out. Hmm. What do we got? We can't sell it with 160 gig. Luckily, the Swiss Army knife will come in handy one more time. Oh, fuck it. It does come, that is so annoying, okay. Now in some cases you might need a two and a half inch to three and a half inch drive adapter. You can pick these up on Amazon as well. We're gonna use one right now, primarily because I already have right here a 500 gigabyte hard drive. We're gonna use that in this particular system. Oh, that power's not? Oh, because we have a different power supply. Son of a biscuit. Okay. We're going to have to run some power real quick to that solid state drive up there. Which, if I recall, was actually pretty difficult unless I had the, power, the, the drive off of the system. Okay, at this point I do want to go ahead and see if the depth on this is going to be enough for the fans. I don't think it will be, so I think we'll have to actually route our fans. <laughs> actually, probably back inside to the case, which I don't actually hate. Um, but we are going to route them right on the bottom of the power supply. Yeah, that's good. All right, so if you take a look here, we just put it right there on the bottom of the power supply. It looks good. So even if you're going like, have a tight case like this and have some issues there are things you can do to clean this up now for the rest of our cables unfortunately that's a little bit more difficult because of the case and the power supply we have here so we're going to have to actually stuff these underneath the drive bay cage the drive cage probably after we zip tie them up a little bit okay so i'll give you guys a view of the rear and in a small case like this, unfortunately, even as best as you can do on the cable management, which you can see we did pretty well here, you're still going to run into the problem of having to press the back panel on. For cheap cases like this, the best method is this. Making sure you line up the notches and then just pushing your body weight on it and sliding up. 
and it'll go in nice and tight. At this point it's ready for the screws and it's ready to go. So we are just going to plug it up, get some shots of it and then call it a day. Now if you guys are worried about the side panel or some of the cables down here, it'll actually get covered up by this side panel as I'll show you. It needs to get cleaned up but now that's a pretty sexy rig. We're gonna throw it up for, let me think about this for a second. Say $185 for the motherboard CPU cooler. Another $100 or $80 for the GPU. $30 for the power supply, that's $120. Case $20, $140. Uh, these are pretty much throwaway. You could do like 10 and uh, 20 another 30 and then oh the memory so all in all guys I'm going to take this PC which is basically a budget legal of legends PC for you guys to play on and we are going to put it on my Shopify which will be linked down in the description below for $250 it'll also be on of course local pickup as well so there you go $250 you can buy one built by me all used parts no warranty all that sort of stuff hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment subscribe yes we failed we could not use a swiss army knife to install or build a pc but we could use just a single phillips head screwdriver this is magnetic too about 50 cents from uh, AutoZone or Walmart. I don't remember. This is Stanley. So there you go. Thanks for watching. See you next Tuesday.